lecture I've just given, uh, I was talking about different technologies for being there together. So virtual environments, video conferences, and we could expand that to include other things. And I think the starting point in talking about virtual environments is always that you have to start with a definition. And the way I would define virtual environments is that they are technologies for giving you the experience of being in another place other than the one that you're physically in. Now my argument, and it's quite a strong one, and it's a future-oriented one, is that if we think of virtual reality technologies or virtual environments as one particular direction, then there really are only two directions that we can possibly go in. And those two directions are on the one hand virtual environments, which are computer-generated, so you have an avatar, the space around you is generated by the computer and you can move around the space, or the second direction is video conferencing. And by video conferencing, what I mean is uh, settings such as this one, where uh, very high quality, room-like, and people can talk to each other as if they're there together, as if they're sitting across the table from each other. Now, I would argue that virtual environments and video conferencing are quite different because in virtual environments you can do a lot of different things. You can appear differently, you can move through the space, you can fly and so on. Whereas in video conferencing you're basically stuck with whatever the camera captures. And these are two completely different directions and they have certain implications. But those are going to be the two directions that we're going to develop in the future and, if you like, forevermore. And so we can already think into the future in these two directions and think back upon the implications of that. Now the second uh, point that I'm going to make in the lecture is that in certain types of immersive environments where you have a kind of room-like space and you're immersed and you can, again, fly around and pick up objects and so on, I think one of the uh, key misconceptions that we have is that face-to-face, -face, in other words, what we're doing here, is always better than uh, doing things at a distance or doing things virtually or doing things in a distributed mode. And I think this is mistaken and we've done lots of experiments to show that uh, this is not the right way to think about things. If you look at this picture and you see this person here with a Rubik's Cube, they're standing there and they're collaborating on this Rubik's Cube with another person who is in a different country. And they're doing this Rubik's Cube together uh, while they're in different places. And what we showed is that if you want to do a Rubik's Cube together, I'm not sure how many people there are who want to do this, but if that's what you want to do, then you can do it just as well as if you're doing it with the cardboard boxes, uh, as shown here. So I think we have this innate preconception that face-to-face -face is always better, but for certain tasks, mainly spatial tasks, uh, they can be done just as well in virtual as they can in real. So I think in virtual environments, uh, I've worked on these for now a number of years, and I think the interesting thing is that there's a lot of hype, there are a lot of hopes about this technology and so on. And if we take a, a very recent example, Second Life, for example, a space in which people can interact with one another. Uh, and here we have a picture of Oxford uh, with two avatars standing there together. Um, these things uh, have kind of cycles of hype and hope. And I think that's going to be with us for some time to come. Uh, but I think my main point is simply that if we think of spaces like this, there are only certain things that you can do within them. When I say only, there are many things you can do within them uh, that are very exciting and you can build together, you can fly together, you can explore spaces together, but they're quite different from video conferencing where you're basically stuck with how you appear. And that has certain advantages and disadvantages too. You don't need to worry about, for example, whether I'm going to throw this table at someone or uh, whether it's going to hit them, because in virtual, that's not going to happen. Uh, in video conferencing, I don't need to really worry about whether the other person is physically there, because I can see them as captured by the camera. 
But these two things, virtual and video, are quite different, and they're quite different directions for the future, and they're quite different technologies with different kinds of possibilities and constraints. And that's really what the lecture was all about.